Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 29th of June with me Patrick Munley. The return to better functioning of the wholesale US dollar money markets and the floor of dollar liquidity has reinstalled a risk on dollar off regime. This can be seen, for example, with the rising negative correlation between the S&P 500 and the dollar crosses. The biggest current threat really to that risk on regime probably comes from the unchecked rise in US COVID-19 cases and the response at the district, state and federal level. Renewed lockdowns stand to delay the US recovery as seen in the sell-off on Friday in the S&P 500. But we also know that uh, Congress and the Fed have a light trigger finger when it comes to fresh stimulus. At some point, will investors start to identify the second wave as a problem unique to the US, meaning the dollar does not receive the typical boost on bad news. In terms of data, the week ahead culminates in the 3rd of July public holiday on Friday, uh, but we'll see much data and Fed speak beforehand. Thursday sees the release of non-farm payrolls, where we can look for a slightly above consensus 3.5 million jump in hiring, as April's 20 million jobs decline continues to be reversed. We should also see a good manufacturing ISA print, uh, perhaps even hitting the 50 level, and reasonably strong consumer confidence data. FOMC minutes of the 10th of June meeting will also be released and a host of uh, Fed speakers will be on tap. If, uh, if you have to pick, you'd probably look at, uh, at Williams, Fed Chair Williams, who's speaking on a panel with the IMF on Monday, and Jerome Powell and Secretary Mnuchin uh, testifying before the House on Tuesday. It's been a good quarter for risk, 20 to 30% gains for the S&P and NASDAQ respectively. So a little profit taking, which probably started on Friday, uh, may continue to be the theme as we head into this week. From a technical perspective, um, the dollar index uh, has put in a reversal of the reversal uh, coming into uh, last week. We saw that, uh, that sharp reversal and uh, we then countered that move. And whilst we hold this um, 9640 area, what I'd look for now is an equality objective at the 9628 symmetry swing resistance there versus this swing. Uh, coming in at 98.40 and we also have trend line resistance coming in there so any move up into this 98.20 to 98.50 area I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns to uh, set short positions looking for at least a move to retest the uh, year to date lows at 94.60 en route to an ideal equality objective at 93.60. In the Eurozone, uh, one worrying development for uh, the, Euro, the Euro has been the US reconsidering sanctions against European goods. Negotiations on tax on the digital industries have not been going well, and a much larger threat looks to be in the making over Nord Stream 2. It's clearly in US interests for this pipeline delivering Russian gas to uh, Germany and Europe not to go ahead, but the EU looks like it's prepared to stand up to US interference in domestic energy policy. A turn for the worse in news flow here could undermine some uh, nascent European optimism. On the subject of optimism, Angela Merkel and Emmanuel Macron meet on Monday as they try to finalise the plans for getting the EU recovery fund over the line. The Eurozone data calendar sees June CPI and some final June PMI releases. Germany also sees June unemployment figures where the rate is expected to rise to 6.5%. From a technical perspective, whilst, uh, whilst we trade below this 113.60 area, I'm now looking for a test of uh, symmetry swing and equality support down to 110.50 to 111. Uh, watching for bullish reversal patterns in this area, to set long positions, targeting a retest of the year-to-date highs just below 115, en route to an ideal equality objective at 160. It's, uh, it's a fairly quiet week on the UK data front with final Q1 GDP <coughs> and June PMI readings having little impact on sterling. Instead, the focus will be on a series of policy speeches over next week from the Bank of England officials. Economists look for further clues 
on possible shift in policy preferences between QE and negative interest rates, following Governor Bailey's comments on the sequencing of between rate hikes and unwinding the balance sheet. Also watch for a speech by PM Johnson on Tuesday outlining a massive infrastructure stimulus plan. Other than that, the prime and overriding driver for sterling remains the UK-EU trade negotiations. Expect little progress during the summer months, um, keeping the uncertainty about UK growth and trade outlook in place, and in turn, uh, having some weight on sterling as probably one of the G10 FX underperformers. The deadline for the UK to request a transition period uh, for the extension will pass this week, uh, but the impact on sterling should be limited as the UK government already indicated it won't opt for it. From a technical perspective, uh, sterling looks uh, to be testing now the symmetry swing and equality support at the 122.50 to 123.20 area. I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns in this zone uh, to set long positions, initially looking for a move back to test the 125 handle from below. A failure to find support at the 122.50 would open a move to retest 120.60. In thinning summer markets, there's been uh, some focus on whether SoftBank's divestment of shares in US telco T-Mobile could have been responsible for hitting the dollar yen last week. SoftBank's stake is worth around 30 billion and corporate finance activities are already underway as part of SoftBank's plan to buy back uh, two, uh, two trillion shares uh, in Japanese yen. M&A flows typically only have a temporary impact on spot markets. This may have been a factor behind the recent dip in the dollar yen. In the week ahead, the Japanese calendar sees retail sales and industrial production for May on Wednesday, uh, the second quarter release of the Bank of Japan's Tanken Business Survey. This is expected to fall heavily as the impact of the second quarter shutdowns are factored in. The consensus for a large uh, manufacturers, uh, a large manufacturing read at, at minus 25 is quite a way off the minus 50 low seen in, uh, in 2009. We'll also be watching Japanese buying of foreign bonds, mentioned this last week, with three consecutive weeks of strong buying. Unless we are going to see some sort of paradigm shift to a bearish US story driving the dollar lower, dollar yen uh, for now is likely to remain range bound. Also, an outside risk are the developments in Hong Kong. China looks set to sign a new security legislation into law this weekend, which could prompt some further retaliation from the West. Uh, so in light with that, uh, that theme of range, I'm looking for the dollar yen to move back up into the 108 area, where I will be looking for bearish reversal patterns to ultimately target a retest of the 106 lows, a breach here, opening move down to the quality objective at 104.20. You'll note we saw a similar decline and recovery uh, after the, the March spike, and so I'm looking for that pattern to, uh, to play out again over here and then a, a grind lower uh, into the back end of the summer. Uh, the Australian dollar keeps tracking global sentiment without a clear idiosyncratic direction uh, due to the lack of key data releases and central bank activity in Australia. This should continue to be the case this week, Although an unexpected jump in infections in Australia may start to show its mark on the currency as the notion that uh, Australia had successfully um, contained the virus was one of the factors that helped the Australian dollar um, build its recent resilience. Australian Prime Minister Morrison has shrugged off the new outbreak and pledged to continue with reopening the economy. But should the number of cases grow at a higher pace, markets may start to price least a slower easing of the lockdown. Looking at the calendar, uh, retail sales on Friday is expected to show double-digit rebound, and the Reserve Bank of Australia's De Bell uh, speech on Tuesday may clarify the bank's position on the Australian dollar after Lowe's comments uh, last week. From a technical perspective, as we hold the 69.70 area, I'm looking for a test of the quality uh, support at the 67 handle, watching for bullish reversal patterns in this area to set long positions, Initially targeting a retest of the prior highs at 70.60, en route to an ideal objective of 71.50. Failure to hold support at 67 will open a deeper corrective move back down to the 65.30s before another bid opportunity will develop. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 29th of June.